You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Living Without Lies with your host, Donna Warren. You're not alone if you've been the victim of abuse, drug usage, or rape. Living Without Lies is here to help. Listen as Donna Warren assists women across the country break the cycle and help create a new life. So now, please welcome the host of Living Without Lies, Donna Warren. Hi folks, it's Donna Warren, host of the Living Without Lies program, and uh, we come to you today from Bold Brave Media, uh, TuneIn Radio, and uh, iHeartRadio. Uh, today we're going to talk, my regular guest is here, Dee. Dee, introduce yourself, please. Hi, this is Dee, Denise Clare, and I am the owner of Successful Living Strategies. I'm a health, life, and success coach, and I help encourage and empower people to become all that they're created to be, to solve some of life's most pressing problems and take things to the next level. So how are you, Donna? I'm fine. Last week we were talking about uh, beliefs, and we're going to talk about beliefs more this week because the very first step in fixing your life and making serious changes in your life to make things better is to be brutally honest with yourself and in order to do that you have to know what you actually believe not what you've been told to believe not what you think you're supposed to believe you know not all that other junk that's out there but what to know what you actually believe about anything you know a lot of our beliefs are irrelevant simple um, you know, no big deal one way or the other. But some of our beliefs are absolutely devastating and can destroy us or others. You know, all this hate that's going on in our political arena today is a good example of beliefs that are causing problems. And it's up to the individuals feeling these and we're acting on these things to find out, do I really believe that? You know, and it's hard to say, you know, personally, you know, I don't, I'm not sure that anybody recently died and left me God, so I don't think I have the right to judge other people. But a lot of people seem to think they do, and a lot of people seem to think they have the right to uh, force their beliefs down our, my throat. And I don't believe they do. What do you think, Dee? Well, uh, I think I feel pretty much like you do, that, um, you know, that uh, I think everybody should have a right to believe what they want to believe. And and um, and I'm thinking too that uh, that we shouldn't be trying to to force others. I mean, live and let live. I mean, if we can do things to help others, you know, it's a good thing. Uh, you might want to, you know, to be able to share thoughts and beliefs that that you feel might be helpful. But as far as trying to uh, force others to believe the way you do. Uh, I, I don't think that's a good thing. No, and it seems to be causing a lot of problems in our country right now. Now, let's, again, let's talking about beliefs. Some of our beliefs matter, like I say, and some don't. But the important thing is that brutal honesty needs to be with ourselves. If there's something wrong with your life and things aren't going well, you need to figure out why. Nine times out of ten, it's because of some belief that you hold that's causing you a problem. And let's take some typical beliefs. Uh, Dee, what are your beliefs about gender roles? Well, um, I'm, I'm not real sure. I mean, uh, I know you and I have talked a lot about some of those things. Uh, I personally, I think, feel that uh, you know, if you are 
physically and emotionally capable of doing something and you meet the criteria of the job, then whether you're, you know, male or female, it really isn't that important. But um, but that's not the way things have been. And I don't know, there's probably still a lot of things where people feel that, um, well, just like uh, probably uh, wrestlers uh, would not make good ballerinas, uh, you know, something like that. Uh, traditionally, uh, nurses used to be female, uh, considered female, uh, and secretaries uh, were considered uh, female. Uh, flight attendants were considered female. Uh, I mean, jockeys. I mean, I I was lived in a time when there were no female jockeys, uh, but I. Uh, ended up meeting this old guy that had race horses. I was about 16 or 17, and, and I was I had my own horse, and, and uh, I worked a lot with horses. And he had a number of race horses, and I, I weighed about 100 pounds. And um, and he, he asked me if I'd worked horses out, and he would have loved to have had me be uh, one of his junkies, but back then. Okay. So, how did that affect you? Did that did any of that uh, women can't work in these fields have any effect on your life and your career? I don't know if you were breaking up on the radio, but you were breaking up in, in my earphones, so I'm not sure what you just said. Although okay, so you've got that. Okay, there's something wrong there because it's, it's um, I think it's stopped now. Yeah, it did. Uh, okay. Okay, ask me again. Uh, the, my question was, did any of, was your career or life affected by the, or the beliefs that women couldn't do certain jobs or women shouldn't do certain jobs? Hmm. Well, I know at the time I probably would have loved to have been a lady jockey and <laughs> like I said, there was no there was no opening there at that time. Uh, and uh, I don't know whether it really concerned me that much. I wanted to be an artist uh, and I, I did office work uh, uh, I don't know. I don't think I really thought about it that much, to be perfectly honest. Okay, so you just accepted the going beliefs that women shouldn't do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I don't even, well, I don't know. I think maybe when I became a teenager, things, people were starting to begin to protest things. But, I mean, I, I really wasn't, you know, into a lot of that stuff. So, um um, I, I don't, you know, it, it really didn't affect me. Now, but, you sound I, like I mean, you weren't interested in doing what, any of the things that were not appropriate for women, right? right so it didn't, become, right. it didn't become a big deal for you. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, I just thought of something else, a doctor. You know, usually you think of a doctor would be a man, but now there's lots of women doctors. Uh so, and then of course, you know, before us, there's a lot of things that women couldn't do uh, that they're that they're we're capable of doing now, and we we don't even give it a second thought. But uh, a lot has changed. Okay. So now you apparently it didn't affect. For me, it had a major effect on my life. Uh, and I was just told we need to go to commercial and I'll go with rather than starting now I'll wait till we come back from the commercial so if you'd like to talk to us and join our conversation call 866-451-1451 text me at 732-995-3969 
or leave us a message on the blog on the radio station under the Living Without Lives program. And we'll be back in a few. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone, anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca 819-360-3266 Now is your time. Welcome back, folks. Before the break, we were talking about gender roles, and Dee said that although she was aware of things like that when she was young, she wasn't really interested in doing anything other than maybe being a female jockey, so it really had little or no effect on her. And apparently her parents didn't berate her about it or give her a hard time about it. Now, in my case, my parents didn't give me a hard time about it, but I've always been interested in math, science. I like to build things. I like to make things. And, uh, you know, when I was growing up, when I was growing up, most people believed you had to have a penis to understand math and science. And that it was totally inappropriate for a girl to be interested in that sort of thing. And even when I went to college the first time, I went under a vocational rehabilitation grant. I wanted to study electrical uh, electronics. And I was just flatly told, no, girls don't do that. Girls can't do that. You won't get a job as a girl. They wanted to make a secretary out of me, and I convinced them that I would not do well in a position where I had, a, you know, a lot of responsibility and no authority. So I did talk them into letting me study accounting. And for me, that made a big difference in what I wanted to be in life. What I actually, I've been, I dreamt of being an electrical engineer since I was a kid. I saw some science fiction movie and was totally turned on by the whole idea. But I had a fight and it was the 80s before I actually got to study engineering, you know, and uh, by then I was a parent with two small, you know, two preschoolers. I was a single parent with two preschoolers. So those kind of things affected my life. They didn't make me feel bad about myself because I didn't believe them. Somewhere along there in my late teens, I looked at those beliefs and decided they weren't true because I was better at math and science and stuff like that than half the boys I knew. And so for me, that didn't affect me, but it affects a lot of people and has, had a, and has affected. I had a friend who was male who he was in the military and was a corpsman. He came out and got a job as a nurse. And that poor guy, he had so much discrimination against him, you know, because uh, everybody thought he was gay because he wanted to be a nurse. But he didn't have the math skills and the science skills to become a doctor. But he did have what he needed to become a nurse. What do you think, Dave? Well, I think uh, that I think it was really good that you know that he could become a nurse. And I, I like you say, there's there's a lot of uh, uh, preconceived ideas of what a person should be or shouldn't be uh, based on gender. And 
you know, if you are good at something and, and you, you want to become that, and it isn't something that is considered what either a man or a woman should be doing, it can be a real challenge. And uh, I think I'm just, I think it was good that you had enough uh, belief in yourself and your abilities uh, that you didn't allow that to become uh, something that would hold you back. But uh, like you said, there's a lot of people who would allow that to happen. And um, uh, an awful lot of people who have been able to do a lot of wonderful things had they listened to other people who had told them that, oh, well, you can't do that or it's you know, just not appropriate for whatever reason, uh, you know, they, they would have missed out on, on being able to do a whole lot of, a whole, you know, be very successful in their life and touch the lives of many other people. So uh, being able to stand up uh, against things like that, beliefs of others, beliefs of, of, of uh, a society in general, uh, as long as you're not breaking laws and as long as you're you're not hurting other people or yourself then then you should uh, you should follow your dreams you should follow uh, your you know what your talents and abilities are uh, because you'll be good at it and you'll be able to serve a lot of people that way well I was fortunate in the fact that although my father told me all those things that I heard from everybody else that Society wouldn't let me, wouldn't hire me to do this and everything. He gave me a soldering iron for his, my eighth birthday. His hobby was playing with electronics. He included me in that. He encouraged me to do it. But he also told me that society would never allow me to earn a living do it, doing it. And, and he, you know, and all of these type of things. Unfortunately, my dad died a few months before I graduated from engineering school with a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. But he knew I was in school and he knew I was finally following that dream. But other people gave me a hard time. And back when I graduated from school, if you weren't in the top 10% of your class, if you were female, you didn't get job interviews because nobody would hire you. And that's changed. And we've seen that change because we're talking about, in my case, in the 80s when that happened. And uh, we're seeing these changes. And yet, it looks to me like people are just looking for more reasons to hate each other than they are to advance anything, and I'm a little confused by it. But could that have stopped me from doing things? Yeah, if I believed it. But then I didn't believe it because I saw with my own eyes that I was better at some of these things than a lot of the males I knew. So for me, that was, I actually, I looked at that belief, I decided it wasn't valid, you know, and I shouldn't allow it. And I told myself, you can't allow that to stop you simply because most people believe it. You know, back uh, hundreds of years ago, people believed the world was flat. Guess what? We found out it's not, that it's not flat. And, uh, you know, just the fact that everybody believes something doesn't make it true. What do you think, Dave? Well, uh, what came to my mind was um, the four minute mile. I mean, there was a time when it was believed that it was impossible to do until somebody <laughs> actually did it. And then after that, there were a lot of people who who, uh, who did better. So uh, sometimes it just takes, you know, one person who believes in themselves and believes that what, what they've been told is impossible to do is possible and do it uh, can change everything for a lot of other people. Yeah, uh, you know, that's been true throughout history. I've, a good example, you know, people used to make fun of science fiction movies with their ray guns because everybody, everybody knew that nothing could be hotter at its point of contact than at its source. And then some idiot at Bell Labs discovered the laser. Guess what? A laser beam is a beam of light that's hotter at its point of contact than it is at its source. And you're right. No, everybody made fun of it, and they stopped because it, somebody invented it and made it a reality. And a lot of beliefs are like that. We have a lot of a cultural, you know, a lot of our cultural beliefs cause us serious problems. Uh, one of the biggest problems you see today is people's lack of self-confidence. They have low self-esteem. And part of that problem is because of beliefs that have been given to them that they've been told that they're supposed to believe and that just the simple fact of the matter is they're not true 
you know, they're just not true. I mean, there's. I was listening to one of that song. I don't know the name of the song, but it's the one that, you know, that every time uh, I think that I'm not enough, every time you tell me that I'm great, I feel less than. That happens. Now, we have to go to commercial, and when we come back, I'll see what D thinks about that. So, 866-451-1451 to talk to us. Uh, seven three two nine nine five uh, three six three six six nine, and uh, also the blog on the radio station website. We'll be back in a few. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Welcome back, folks. Uh, before the break, we were talking about many of our common beliefs that just aren't true. And I was talking about that song out there where the girl says, you know, somehow I'm not good enough. I'm not enough. And what do you think about all that, Dee? Well, I think every one of us, uh, whether we're consciously aware of it or not, have uh, those feelings of I'm not good enough running in the background deep down inside. Uh, and it, it can be with different things for different people. Uh, some people might feel like they, they would, are not good enough to, uh, to be a good mate, or they're not good enough to play ball, or they're not good enough you know, to whatever you know, it might be. Uh, and those things are just conscious. They, they are deep and they are subconscious, but we still feel that way deep down inside. And, uh, and it really can affect everything that we do. It keeps us from moving forward, from uh, really excelling in ways that we would like to be able to. And so uh, it's important to learn how to find out what those beliefs are. Uh, and the more you can shine the light on it, uh, because again, these are usually things that, that nobody's really aware of consciously. Uh, so the more that you're able to bring those things to light and, and see them for what they are, and, and then then see, you know, well, is this really true? And either all or most of it really isn't. I mean, and and so it's it's, it's really uh, what I say. Uh, freeing uh, it's giving it, it, it just gives you a freedom uh, and a sense of relief that you know that you don't you haven't had for a long time and, and that's one thing that I really like about the learning because it really helps you to see that 
wow, I, I'm not any of those things that I used to believe. And if I do have limitations, well, you know, if I want to, I can do something about it. And um, so it gives you the freedom to become, you know, the person who you really are and are meant to be. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, there's uh, in in my book, The Seven Basic Rules of Living Without Lies, I, I give an example of a father who keeps telling his son he's stupid. You know, and he'll do that for years. And, you know, the fact is that there will be two people on this planet that believe that boy is stupid. The father and the son. And if the boy truly believes he's stupid and he can't do these things... He's never going to be successful because in, first thing, in order for me to be successful at something, the very first thing is I have to believe that I'm capable of doing it, that I'm capable of being a success in that field. And if I don't believe that, it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. And this is true of a lot of things. And what you said is true, Dee. We need to know what our limitations are. Nobody is good at everything. You know, uh... You have some very brilliant people out there that have trouble tying their shoes simply because it's not in their wheelhouse. I've known a few of them. They're, most of the time they are, they tend to be autistic, but they, they're brilliant. But they have trouble with everyday things. Then we have people who are good with their hands and can do anything. You know, they may not be able to read or write. Some of them can't. But that doesn't mean they're not good enough. It doesn't mean that. It just means that that area is not part of their talents. Every human being on this planet is born with talents and has abilities and has something to contribute to the rest of the world. But you got to find out what that is. And you cannot believe everything that people tell you. You need to test beliefs to see if they're valid. What do you think, Dee? Well, that's very true, and you know, you might, and and well, like, like sometimes, well, uh, I know it's not as believed as much now as it used to be, but if you do, we talked about the college degree. Well, a lot of people felt like they were less than, not good enough, because you know they they didn't go to college or they may have uh, tried and, and not done that well. But that doesn't mean that they can't really excel in something else. Uh, they might become a wonderful chef or uh, a, a brilliant artist or uh, uh, you know, a wonderful plumber. Or, or uh, I mean, they could do anything uh, they want to be. You know, it's just as important and it can be just as fulfilling. So just because... You don't have a degree or you don't have this or you don't have that uh, doesn't mean that you can't really do something great. And, uh, uh, well, Disney was told, uh, he was told by a lot of people that, that, you know, that he had no talent and and that, uh, that a talking, nobody would, would, would buy into a talking mouse like Mickey Mouse, uh, I mean, he was turned down many, many times. And, uh, I mean, look at all the different things. And he's got uh, theme parks and all kinds of stuff all over the uh, world, probably. And and, uh, so, you know, if you have a dream, don't let other people discourage you. Uh, Just go with it. And and, um, everything that that a person can do, uh, all of the jobs, all of the professions, everything that is out there, is important. We we need everybody. We need all professions. Uh, so uh, don't let us discourage you. Just be the best you can be at whatever you can do. And if you can learn and grow more in the process, that's great. And if you can't, just be ver- the very best at whatever you can do. Yeah, you know, I agree with that. We all have different built abilities. And I think I may have mentioned this on the show before. I learned an extremely important lesson, one of the most important lessons I've ever learned from a young man with Down syndrome. I was working for his father in an office, and uh, Bobby's job was to 
come around and give us our mail. He could read well enough to compare the names on the envelopes with the names on our desk or doors, wherever the nameplate was, and give us our mail. And I'm curious by nature, and I'm also very interested in anthropology, so I was curious about him and what he could do, what he couldn't do, what his limitations were. So I used to talk to him and ask questions and whatnot. And from him I learned a very important lesson because I saw that he was like small children. You know, he, he, it never occurred to him that he could be apart from the whole. He believed he was part of the universe and it never occurred to him that, that he wasn't. And uh, he could, in other words, he couldn't consciously choose to be evil because it just didn't work in his brain. And that taught me a lot about free will. Our free will is our ability to choose evil. And we have to go for a commercial, and uh, we'll pick up this conversation when we come back. Call us at 866-451-1451. Text me at 732-995-3969, or leave us a message on the blog on the radio station website. We'll be back in a few. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current and concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. person caring for someone living with dementia, then this program is for you. It's designed for families and friends coping with the challenges of caregiving. The foundation of care, Susan Kohler believes, is communication. Innovative Dementia Care with Susan Kohler provides strategies to keep the lines of communication open between you and your loved one, increase quality interactions, decrease the burden of daily care for you, the caregiver. Join Susan, 11 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network. Susan and her guests will share techniques so you can facilitate your loved one's ability to safely follow your instructions, participate in daily activities, and express daily wants and desires. To learn positive solutions, creative ideas, and practical strategies that will build a healthy foundation of care. folks welcome back we're back and um, we were talking to about um, beliefs and the fact that everyone has something to offer what do you think Jane? Uh, well uh, yeah everybody has I believe everyone has uh, a se- seeds of greatness within them and uh, one of the things that really is is very discouraging I think to to people is lots of parents, I, I don't know whether they do it so much today, but they, they sure used to do it um, uh, when I was growing up, that lots of parents would uh, kind of live through their kids. They would expect them to become a doctor or a lawyer or a baseball player or uh, a skater or, or something. And, you know, it might not have been something that the child really wanted to do or be uh, in the first place. And I kind of have a feeling that my my dad's dad, he was a doctor. I think he wanted my dad to be a doctor. And uh, my dad actually uh, went to medical school, but died uh, in, in, in an accident. And uh, after he died, uh, my dad quit. He quit uh, medical school and became uh, an advertising manager. So uh, 
you know, uh, I mean, I never remember him saying anything about it, but it was very possible that, that his dad expected him, you know, to follow in his footsteps. And, and he, he did it to, to please his dad, but that wasn't where his heart was. Well, that's common for children to have to do it. For people that own businesses and expect their children to follow in their footsteps, that becomes an issue. And, uh, yeah, no, I never, of course, I never had that kind of pressure. My dad worked in a factory. And when my mother worked, she worked as a clerk or a waitress or, you know, something of that nature. Nothing that required any special skills or talents, just to learn the, the, the job she was doing. And I never had that kind of pressure, but I know a lot of people do get that. And, you know, one of the things most children want to do is to please their parents. You know, they don't want their parents to be ashamed of them. They want them to be proud of them. And yes, if you, uh, it, it can be serious. Uh, I'm sure your dad in some ways probably felt that uh, he was disappointing his father and that somehow he was a personal failure because he didn't live up to what his family wanted him to do. Yap, 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 yap. Now, was that a valid, you know, belief for your father? Do you think? Uh, no, because I mean, he he ended up. I mean, he was he was very creative, and and uh, and he he was he came up with lots of really great ideas and and things. And I think he really enjoyed doing what he was doing. Uh, uh, but I would much rather, and I'm, I'm sure uh, he probably felt good about being able to do something that, that he felt that he could be good at or something that he enjoyed doing, uh, being able to use some of his uh, his creative talents. Uh, uh, and, I, and I'm sure that he he had to have you know, started out trying to be a doctor just because he wanted to, to please his dad. Yeah. Yeah. Um... You know, that's an, another thing. You see that with a lot of people today. And they're trying to be something that somebody else wants them to be. But the big thing again here, we're looking at beliefs. If I don't do become what my parents want me to do, does that make me a failure? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think if I don't try to do the things that I want to do, that I'm good at, that I like doing, if I don't try to do that, then I will be a failure because I won't even try, you know. And I'll do, and I'll settle for at best something that I'm bored with and don't like. What do you think, Dee? I think that you should follow your dreams because uh, that's that's where your greatness is. I, I'm, and I don't mean, you know, I, that's that's just that's who you're meant to be. It's, that's why you're here. Each one of us has, you know, talents and gifts to give back to uh, the rest of society. And, and so I think it's, it's, you know, you're letting yourself down and, and everybody else down if you're not able to fulfill that. Uh, I mean, it doesn't mean you're a total failure if you don't do that either. I mean, you can still have a fulfilling life and you can still take care of your family. And, and that's, that's good, too. But the thing is, you can, you can take things to another level uh, and, and really... Uh, really radiate and and and, uh, and really be everything you're created to be and uh, and that's I think really what I want to help people to do to see uh, Don and I both want to help people to see that you know you don't have to stay where you are uh, you don't have to be stuck there's a lot more choices uh, there and a lot more information out there uh, that's now available uh, so that you can do something about it and, and so we're trying to, you know, be able to help people to, to see, you know, you, you don't have to be stuck. Uh, there's, there's a lot of choices, and, and she and I are both working on uh, helping people to overcome a lot of things and to actually just grow and become a whole lot more. Yeah. That's true. And part of, like I said, we were looking at beliefs because that's the beginning. If you want to make a better life for yourself, if you want to be successful, if you want to change things, the first thing you must do is look at all of your beliefs and you need to look at them carefully to see if, first of all, you believe they're true to begin with. Secondly, if you think they are true, 
In what way does that actually affect you? Are they true for you at this moment in time? Do they reflect truly on you or not? You know, it's like some of those things about the men and women and what they, their fields and whatnot. Some of those things are true. Women, according to General Dwight D. Eisenhower, women were much better uh, telephone operators than men. So, you know, uh, and again, there's different things there. It's time for us to go to another commercial, so uh, we'll pick this back up when we come back. Give us a holler at uh, 866-451-1451. Text me at 732-995-3969. Or, you know, leave us a message on the blog on the radio station website, and we'll be back in a few. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Welcome back, folks. Uh, before before the break, we were talking about, you know, you have to look at these beliefs and see what they are and whether they're valid. And I said some of those beliefs about jobs and capabilities for men and women, there's an element of truth in them, but it doesn't mean that they're, they're blanketly true. You know, in general, men are better at science and math than women, in general. But that doesn't mean that all men are better than all women. It just means that the majority of people good at it will be male. And that's true. Of course, it's changing with time. Females are getting more and more into that. And why is that? Because we haven't been discouraged. We're now encouraged to study science. We're encouraged to study math. We're encouraged to do these things. In other words, the culture out there, some of them are telling us that, hey, just because you're a girl doesn't mean you can't be a scientist. And even some of our TV shows and whatnot are pushing the fact that there are women scientists. And, you know, there really always have been, but nobody knew who they were. But that's the general stuff. And does that affect us? Absolutely. There's more serious things, and we'll talk more about them next week. We're going to talk about the big things that really cause us problems, like our attitudes toward money, towards relationships. You know, our attitudes toward science, our attitudes toward our, you know, our self-confidence and whether we're good enough, our attitudes toward whether we actually want to do something or not. We'll talk more about that next week, but these little things and gender uh, concepts are, are, are something that can cause you problems if you let them. But they won't cause you problems if you don't let them. And any, any, any belief that's standing in your way as to why you're not doing something you want to do, you need to look at it from a point of view is, first of all, is this true? And if it's partially true, is it true? Is it true all the time? You know, the only example I could give of that is something that people might find objectionable. But as a female, I can't write, I can't write my name in, in the sand when I go to the bathroom. Every boy out there can. That's strictly physical, a physical thing. And that is a major difference. What do you think, Dee? Yeah, that's very true. There's a lot of things that uh, that men can do that women can't. And uh, there's probably things that women, well, there are things that women can do that men can't. They can't give birth to a child. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's things both, on both sides. Uh, both ends, uh, where but but then again, sometimes, uh, like you said, that the majority can't, but there might be one or two or three or or a few that can, and so uh, we we shouldn't just think that uh, because most people can't that that you can't. 
Yeah, that's true. That is absolutely true. Uh, you know, we need to find, like I said, in order to be successful, one of the primary things that you have to believe that it is possible for you to do whatever it is you're trying to do. If you don't believe that you're, you're capable of doing it, chances are you won't be able to. You will either fail because you really don't have the talent or ability necessary, or you'll sabotage yourself so that you'll fail because you don't believe you can do it. And, uh, you know, each one of our beliefs is an issue. We have plenty of them. And like I said, these are beliefs that affect our careers, you know, and our financial success in, in life. But we have other beliefs about, uh, you know, our worthiness as a person, whether we deserve good things in our lives, our attitudes toward money, our attitudes toward religion, our attitude about what we think we should be or how we think we should feel without actually looking at what do I think, what do I believe, how do I really feel, and to look at it, you know, and take it apart and see if it's valid. Throw away the emotions and, and the fear and the shame and look at it objectively to see whether it actually serves a purpose in your life or whether it's stopping you from being what you want to be or who you can be or changing whatever it is you're trying to change. Okay, uh, Dee seems to be having a little problem there. She kind of went away. So in, in these beliefs, for example, uh, I think I mentioned it before in the show, I'm fat. You know, and there's all kinds of euphemisms people use, but I'm fat, period. Now, does that affect my daily life in being successful? No. Uh, if my goal was to become Miss America, I don't think so. It would affect that. That wouldn't be a reasonable goal for me. But does it affect my ability to be a good engineer? No. Does it affect my ability to be a good teacher? No. Does it affect my ability to, you know, do anything that requires knowledge and skill? No. Would I be, you know, should I be jumping out of parachutes if I got to make sure the thing will hold my weight? But other than that, sure I can. Why not? Why not? Does it have to affect me because everybody else thinks it should? You know, um, because I'm fat, does that mean that uh, I'm, I'm not going to be attractive to the opposite sex? No, I've been married three times, lived with two other men, so I don't think that's been a problem in my life. But for me, it's not a problem because I don't believe it's true. I don't believe it's true. I don't believe that that makes me unattractive, stupid, where nobody would want me, and all. That. I don't believe that. So those beliefs don't affect me, but I know a lot of women out there who feel that way because they think they're too tall, too fat, too skinny, you know, too, too this, not enough of this. You know, et cetera, et cetera. Their, their breasts are too small. It, you know, all those things out there that makes them feel like they're not worthy, they're not good enough. They're not enough. And are these beliefs true? Those particular beliefs are only true if you let them be. Because otherwise they're not. They're not true. But we have a tendency as human beings to want to lord over other people and to, you know, make ourselves feel better because we're better than they are. And quite honestly, that's not true. You know, it really isn't true that we're better than other people. We're different. Each of us has our own, you know, talents, abilities. You know, each one of us can do different things. It depends on the person. You know, um... You have uh, blind people who do some fantastic things. People in wheelchairs accomplish things. I watched the, the guys playing basketball in, the, in wheelchairs. Now, who 50 or 100 years ago would have thought that would even be possible? But it is. They do it because when somebody told them, oh, you can't possibly do that, and their answer to that was, well, why not? I know that we're not – pardon me? Um – Anyway, um, when I was in college, in engineering school, I had two small kids. I was a single parent. And every once in a while, I'd get to that point where I'd just say to myself, what the hell's the use why bother? I can't do this. I should just give it up. Well, I also had some naysayers in my life, the people that told me that I was stupid to try it. I should never have done it. I couldn't do it. It wasn't possible, et cetera, et cetera. 
anytime I felt like quitting, I used to go visit those folks because I knew they would tell me all that nonsense. And you see, for me personally, that was a challenge. And folks, don't ever underestimate the power of wanting to prove someone wrong as an incentive to be successful. I might not have believed anything else, but I wanted to prove those folks wrong. And when I graduated, I went to visit them and I thanked them for making it possible for me to complete the four years of college, of engineering school. And they all looked at me, you know, their mouths hit the floor. And I told them the fact that you were told me how dumb and stupid it was made me determined to prove you wrong. So thank you for making it possible for me to succeed. I needed that kind of encouragement, if only because I was angry with them about it. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it did for me. It, it gave me the incentive to go on and be successful. Now, other aspects of my life needed changed, and uh, I want to go into that sort of thing next week when, you know, we we have um, some time to go into some of those very specific things and some of the other problems we run into in life. But the biggest thing in life is to look at your beliefs. Look at your beliefs. You know, the people used to think that world was flat. It ain't. People used to think that uh, nothing... You know, like that. I said before, the something could be hotter at its point of contact and its source, and then somebody invented the laser. You know, somebody else used to think that they thought television was impossible, radio was impossible, space flight was impossible. All of these things that over the years people have thought was true. And the thing about our beliefs is our beliefs come from many sources. They come from our families first, uh, a school, television, radio, the books we read. Everything that we belong to, everything that we see and hear, everything that we experience, all of them affect our beliefs. Of course, our religion, our major belief source is our family because, you know, they start indoctrinating us when we're born and and they are the primary influence up until we're 10 or 12 years old. At that point, we start doing more thinking for ourselves, and at some point we realize that our parents aren't always right. You know, and then I don't know about everybody else, but eventually I reached an age where I realized that my parents had a right to be wrong. They were human beings and they could make mistakes and they had to, the right to do that as we all do. And making a mistake doesn't make you dumb, stupid, bad, or all those many things that we call people. It just means they're human beings and they didn't do, and they did something wrong or they held a belief that wasn't true. So in, in any event is, you know, we need to look at every one of these things that we're doing and see if it's true or not. And so I ho hope everyone here has read my book, The Seven Basic Rules of Living Without Lies. It's available on uh, Kindle, on Amazon. You can buy it in paperback, but it's, uh, cheap. it's cheaper if you get it as a Kindle book. And for those of you who don't use Kindle, you can download an app to your phone or your computer to read Kindle books. You don't have to own a Kindle. And uh, I have the book out there, The Seven Basic Rules of Living Without Lies. If that'll go in, if you go into there, you can look at it and it'll explain in more detail how to do these. The Living Without Lies course that I have actually is a workbook that walks you through a lot of these. Some of the questions I've been asking Dee about this, that, and the other thing, that book asks you different questions. That asks you just different questions. And uh, so you want to look at those, and uh, I highly, you know, please get the book and read it. It's not expensive. Get it and read it. And it'll help you see what kind of things you need to listen to. I'm working on putting the course online. I've been doing that for a while, but I haven't had the opportunity to do it. And um, I haven't had the funds to do it either, so it hasn't gotten done yet, but I'm working on it right now. And it'll help you decide, it'll help you look at your beliefs about all kinds of different things. And once you look at your beliefs and figure out what they are, it'll, it'll help you figure out how to change things to make it different. The one major thing I learned having been, I'm a former addict, and one of the things I learned on, you know, to become, to get clean and not do the thing, uh, thing was that in order to change things, you know, that I can't 
think my way into anything, any good living, any success. I mean, can't think my way into stuff, but I can live my way into good thinking, into being successful, into being happy. I can think, live my way into doing that by starting to do the things that will make me happy. If you're not sure what your career should be, I have a section in there on, on how to choose careers. I would have loved to have been a forensic scientist, but I have a problem. When I have a, a really bad smells, I get sick and throw up. Uh, you know, so it just that one little problem there made me think that being a forensic scientist might not be a good thing because I have smelled a decomposing corpse, and trust me, I was coming home from work one day, and there was one in the woods uh, near uh, off the road I was on. I had to pull over because I threw up. I don't think that that type of things with really bad smells would be a good career for me. You know, um, if I'm five foot two inches tall, I'm not. My chances of becoming a professional basketball player aren't very high. There has to be reasonableness, but also you need to look at what your abilities are. There's help for figuring out what kind of a career you should have. There's help for how to deal with your families. There's help for how to deal with your feelings of inadequacy. There's help in there in a way, and I'm not telling you to do it. I'm helping you work through it because there is no, you know, one, two, three, quick answer. Each one of us is an individual. The uh, beliefs we have that are holding us back are individual to each of us. Uh, is it? Okay, uh, we need to go to a commercial. Oh, all right. I need to close the show. We've got kind of having some communication issues here. So, folks, please come back next week. I hope you found tonight's, you know, okay, good, and that you found it a source. And please come back, read the book, you know, and uh, I hope you have a nice weekend. And, uh, and God bless you. You've been listening to Living Without Lies with your host, Donna Warren. Contact Donna at D-L-U-H-R-S at Comcast.net or call 732-995-3969 for information about the Living Without Lies Foundation. You are not alone on the path to building a new life. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.